Greetings, welcome, and salutations to episode 13 of XEP's Creator Talk. If you are supporting over on Patreon, thank you immensely. You are keeping the lights on and the content coming. If you're watching later on YouTube, when this goes live to everyone publicly, please consider supporting XEP over at patreon.com slash Xbox Expansion Pass, as we would love to have you there. Today for Creator Talk, I am joined by one Plume Network, an Xbox and gaming content creator whose channel has amassed over 16,000 subscriber, subscribers rather, and is a personal favorite of mine who I watch his daily news bites and videos recapping the topics of the gaming news day. Plume, welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I appreciate you watching my show daily. I know I put out a lot of videos, so for you to watch all that, that's kudos to you. But yeah, I'm excited to get into this and, and, and talk. I'm excited to have you here. Um, certainly your channel has become kind of a mainstay for a lot of people uh, in the gaming and Xbox space for you to have amassed 16,000 plus subscribers. That's incredible. Uh, when was it that you started making content? So my channel actually has a pretty long history. I actually started at the, be I want to say the beginning of 2017 is mm -hmm. when I, I put out my first video. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've been putting out tons of content since then. I think I have like over a thousand videos on my content, but mm -hmm. my, my channel has really, it started off completely, well, not completely different, but it definitely started off different to where it is right now, as you probably see with most creators where they start and then they, they kind of pivot and they finally fall into something that, that they are good at and that people like watching. So yeah, but since 2017, so going on, what is that, six, seven years now that I've been mm -hmm. making content? So it's been, it's been a long road, but a fun road for sure. What was the original intention of your content versus what it is now? Um, well, my original tension was essentially just talking about gaming, like singular topics and just if something came up, just giving my opinion on it. Also, mm -hmm. I, I love like older games and retro games. So I, I have videos of collections or pickups that I've done because I used to do a lot of garage sailing and trying to find old games to add to my collection. So I have a bunch of videos of those that's kind of fallen off a little bit. The mm -hmm. pandemic really killed a lot of the garage sailing and, and just being able to find those gems. Everyone kind of just moved to, to online. So that was that was the content. And I experimented with like news uh, daily-ish videos where I was talking about multiple things. And then I would switch back between just commentary versus like kind of like a new show going back and forth until I think it was the just before the launch of the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 5 where my channel started to gain traction and then I kind of fell more into the daily news um, providing people just updates as to what's going on really focusing on Xbox and, and PlayStation 5 stuff and then now I'm a gaming news channel I do definitely skew towards Xbox as everybody who watches my channel would know that that's it's my preference. So now it's more daily news on kind of what's going on in the Xbox world and then just picking up other important news stories around that as well. So when you consider the content that you make now versus what you make then, is there a time investment difference? Like early on you're doing pickups, you're going out there. That sounds like that was a hobby initially versus what you're doing now. Is there an amount of time investment difference? Uh, it, yeah, I would say so. I would say it's it's like kind of give and take because when I first started, it was like more hobbyist style of stuff, still had that commentary. And it took, I would say, maybe in a way more time back then than it does now because it was figuring everything out, right? How does, how does audio work? How does video work? How does editing and uploading and try to figure out how all that stuff comes together in creating a video before putting it out something that people would tune into and put hopefully watch and then kind of want to stay on that channel so that mm -hmm. side of things in terms of the production has completely shifted to now it's like i'm so good at doing it and i'm so efficient at doing it it's taken less time on that end mm -hmm. which is i would say the most annoying part of creating the videos is the actual production side 
-hmm. the best part is being able to talk and share your opinions and just kind of talk about the things that you love where it has, it does take more time now is making sure to the best of my ability with the time that I have to make videos that the stuff I talk about, I'm actually like doing my due diligence in, in the information that I'm providing. Cause I obviously I'm a one man show. I make mistakes on my channel. Maybe I say things that are, may not be a hundred percent true, or I missed like something that changed before I made my video and I didn't realize mm -hmm. it until later. I don't do that intentionally, but it happens. But I try, I spend way more time now trying to make sure that the things I say are relevant and, and providing people with real information as to what is going on. So that side of the production, I would say takes more time, but the actual editing and getting the videos ready takes less time. So it's kind of weird how that is, but it is just kind of a give and take in terms of the time output. But I would say overall now, I do put more time as a whole into my channel because I'm putting out a video daily. I see the comments where people are like, I watch your videos every single day. And I feel like kind of obligated to make sure that I get a video up so people aren't waking up at 8 a.m. and saying, hey, where's Plume's newscast video? Mm -hmm. Why isn't it here today type of thing? So, so oh, that brings up a, a number of questions, uh, particularly for me, because I despise the production side of things. That's yeah. not my skill set or my interest at all. I enjoy the commentary and talking and discussing. Uh, something I've noticed with your videos uh, that I like, so take this how I mean it because it sounds strange, but they're very formulaic. You follow a very simple, efficient formula of delivering the news. And to me, that's very reliable. And I would argue that that's what a lot of people look for. They get that simple delivery. Is that that efficiency you're talking about on the production side? Like, you know what you want to say, you say it, but then you know what to to do with video and lining up images, things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like every day I have my formula that I go through and it's not like rocket science or anything crazy. It's, it's basically just having topics and making sure that I'm like transitioning between topics in a way that makes it easy to understand and then providing the news, giving my opinion on the news and then going to the next topic. Essentially that's kind of what my formula is instead of sometimes you, when I first started, I would go in and I would not really know how the video was going to turn out or how it was going, um, what I was going to say. But now I definitely can say that pretty much every single day going into a video, I can be pretty confident that I'll have something presentable to put out there that is people will want to listen to. You may not like every single video I put out because I put out so many, but mm -hmm. it'll be it'll capture a certain part of of my of my viewership, no matter what, just because of it's something I've been doing for so long now, it's almost like second nature, which is, mm -hmm. it's super important for when your channel has grown to like have, I think that consistency just mm -hmm. for your own sanity too, right? When, when, if you're doing like new style of videos. Do you find yourself with bloopers or having to stop and restart or edit whatnot? That's something that happened to me a lot early on. Now, if I <laughs> stutter, I'm just like, whatever, keep going. Yeah, I same same as you. Early on, it was a lot, but I I realized that like people like to see that you're human, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody can speak for twenty minutes straight without any sort of like um or maybe tripping over a word or two. So I, I realized that sometimes I do I do cut them out because sometimes I'm in the middle of a sentence and like my brain just shuts off and I just say something completely random or just skip over a word and it just sounds absurd. So I do a little cut that out. But if I read something wrong, I like mix up a couple of words. Mm -hmm. I'll just continue and just reread or whatever, or continue on with my sentence. I used to cut everything out. Uh, if you go back mm -hmm. to some older videos, you'll see that I, there's probably zero errors in the videos. And I realized people, people don't care that much. They, they know that you're human and I'm sure everyone who watches my channel knows I'm one man, like I'm doing all this by myself. So I'm going to make errors here and there. And I'm mm -hmm. sure they'll forgive me for, for those small errors. It's funny how as a content creator, there is a pressure to get it right, to do well. But then when you make that discovery of, they do want to see human elements human sides yeah. they're okay with the stutters how much that changes the pressure that you feel like you put yourself under is that true for you as well 
Yeah, it's for me one of the things that it really clicked with me is I say weird words weirder than people. I'm, I'm Canadian, so I say things differently than a large part of my viewership is in the States. And I see mm -hmm. people in my comments making fun of the stuff I see all the time. And I used to be like, damn, I got to make sure I'm saying correctly. Now I just laugh. Like, I don't care. It's like hilarious. I actually, mm -hmm. I, when I, when I know I'm saying something that is probably said differently and I see that comment, I'm like, Hey, that person at least watched the video and, and listened mm -hmm. to the words. Right. Which is kind of a good thing. Yeah. So the pressure for that part for me has definitely changed as I've grown and make more videos. Mm -hmm. Now you're making a video every single day for news dose and it's really, uh, it, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, but certainly there's time invested on your end. Is this your job? Is this your hobby? Is it a second job for you? How do you view it, uh, in terms of the impact on your life? It is, it's a, tr it's transitionary. It used to be just a hobby. Um, mm -hmm. And now I take it more serious, not because it's my main job or anything, but uh, it obviously as the channel grows, you do start to make a little bit of money off of it. You make ad revenue off it, that type of stuff. But the main thing why I would take it more seriously now is because like I said, I see people and pretty much everyone I've talked to when they're like, I watch your video every day. It's like mm -hmm. a, a sense of pride to put that video out for them because I know that they're watching it and I don't want to let them down type of thing. So it's kind of, it is like a second job at this point. Um, it's, it's like I do it at night. So it's after I've finished everything that I have to do in my real life, I guess, I don't know how else mm -hmm. to say it. It's uh, the, what I what I do after, but it's definitely my passion project. Mm -hmm. Like if I could ever turn this into my full-time job, I would absolutely do it. If that was, I don't know if that'll ever be a thing, but I would absolutely do it. Cause I, I absolutely love to do it. Do you find yourself, uh, reaching out to the, like the major companies or, or, uh, third parties, like obviously you're in Canada, so you'd connect with Xbox Canada or Walmart Canada, things like that. Do you ever find yourself reaching out to them? for possibilities or is, is YouTube the focus for you? YouTube's the focus. YouTube's the focus. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would, I, I don't know. I don't reach out to Xbox Canada if, to mm -hmm. answer that question. If anything, I just read emails that come into me. If people do mm -hmm. reach out to me, which it's not like a crazy amount. I, the amount of people don't realize is that when you start growing your channel, you'll get tons of emails, but you really have to be careful on like, companies will want to push anything, right? I, I delete emails, so many emails every day just because I don't have any interest in in dealing with certain companies or dealing with certain products. It's just like a waste of my time unless my viewers, I think that they would be interested in it, right? Then I'll, I'll consider it. So um, yeah, no, YouTube would be, is my main focus. Like it's, I don't want to ever be strapped to working for like a big company than having not being able to kind of give my true opinions of, about things that I, I, I think right about stuff. So, yeah. Gotcha. I was just curious. It's one of those things where you see some channels aim to work with a uh, company, yeah. a company B. I know a lot of in the Xbox content creation community. Um, some of us really want to connect with, with, you know, Rubenstein or, or Aaron Greenberg or, you know, the Xbox proper, Others, they enjoy the commentary, the flair, and for others, it's playing a character and they enjoy that aspect of it. Um, would you say that like news delivery is your main passion for gaming? I would just say everything like the industry and, and staying up to date on what is going on and trying to understand why companies make certain decisions and then kind of seeing how that relates to the consumer perspective of things and news plays a major role in that. So, yeah, I, I mean, if I wasn't making YouTube videos, I probably would still be reading all of the news that I present on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Like uh, I lunch, I work or something, or when I'm laying in bed on my phone before I mm -hmm. go to bed, I'd be reading this stuff anyway. So I'm just now putting it in, in video format and giving my opinion on the stuff that it gotcha. So, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Now I'm curious why Xbox, what drew you to Xbox as a, as a primary source? I know that you game and dabble in others. I enjoyed your PlayStation, uh, portable, uh, or portal, I should say, uh, coverage there, but I know that Xbox is kind of your, your primary focus. Is that, if that's the right word, why yeah, not? For sure. I've just, 
always enjoyed what Xbox offers all the way back to the OG Xbox, like Halo Combat Evolved, probably my favorite game. It's definitely up there. It's hard choosing my favorite game of all time, but it's definitely in the conversation. If I had to choose one, I, I would see myself leading towards it. Just always been an Xbox fan from, from the very beginning. I've played pretty much every platform, every single generation, starting with the Super Nintendo. Not that I can remember too much of that era because I wasn't that old then, but so it's just I've always enjoyed Xbox. And like the Xbox 360 era was just such a huge generation for me in terms of uh, games that released the connectivity with my friends. I was in high school at that time. So I just gears every day after school, Halo 3, so many just amazing memories from, from 360. And it just kind of has stuck with me uh, going forward. And, I've, and I, it's weird because in my personal life, all of my friends where, where I am, where I live, they're all PlayStation dudes. So it's hard to ever really even discuss Xbox with them because they're always coming at it from they, they're not that interested in Xbox and, and PlayStation is better. So I don't really have anyone in my life right now to talk about Xbox with. So I go and I make this channel. I go online. I find the Xbox community and it just kind of is a perfect fit for me. So, yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. It's just I like their games. I like, I've always been I've always preferred their Xbox games over the PlayStation first party games. Gotcha. Makes good sense. I know for me, um, I have bounced back and forth. 360 was hugely important to who I am as a person of all things, because it arrived when I was in college and molded my interests and my uh, recreation and such. And then I went from PlayStation 4 uh, back to Xbox One mid-gen, thanks to some of the ways that Xbox was treating its customers. And I've, I've actually enjoyed Xbox being in third place because I've seen them work so hard to earn my dollar. That's actually been yeah. a big draw <laughs> for me, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's I kind of have a similar path too when it comes to the Xbox One. I I wouldn't say mid gen, but I actually bought a PS4 that beginning of that generation just because of all of the stuff at the launch with the Xbox mm -hmm. One with the DRM. I had no interest in the Connect. And I believe it was a more expensive console launch too. So I went with the PS4 mm -hmm. then. And then a few years later, I bought the Xbox One and I played Sunset Overdrive and played Rise and, and all these games that I missed out on by not getting an Xbox One. And I would say that I switched even... 360 was my primary. PS4 was the primary at the start of the next gen. And then a bit through Xbox One again was my primary throughout the rest of, of Xbox. And then when they did the whole Game Pass stuff, the one x i was like on that day one and i could see just the value that they were going to eventually be able to bring by a subscription mm -hmm. service right like you're at a point where games are very expensive and you can pay 15 bucks a month or whatever it is and get all mm -hmm. of this content like that to me was just super appealing and, and had the way like you said they treated their consumers to me was better than what playstation was doing i'm curious to see if it pays off truly because that Xbox One generation really did hurt. And I know Phil Spencer has commented on how they that was the worst generation for them to lose. Um, but I've seen such an effort to correct first hardware, then services, now software, um, that there's a lot to enjoy. But I feel like for some reason they just can't stick the stigma or get rid of the stigma that came from that Xbox One generation. Yeah, I, I, it's hard, I think, as well for them. And I, I think what Phil says about it, the Xbox One being the worst generation to lose, just is that's what it is. It's so hard to move away from that. If you were on PS4, where it was like, for most people, their primary digital generation and all of their friends were on PS4, they all bought their digital catalogs. It's a lot of people just continue now onto the platform that that they were on where their catalog is and where their friends are at and they probably don't even look or know about the value of the stuff that is within xbox game apps i know from my personal experience even from people i talk to in my real life like they have no idea that the games that are in there the, some of them don't even know about like bethesda and starfield being in game pass which is just mm -hmm. crazy to me that they want to play these games and they don't know that you can literally sign up for 15 bucks 
play through the game, right? And so I think it's just hard from that sense. The marketing PlayStation, I think, has always been much better at marketing than Xbox. And even even when they're having a down year, you look at this year, Spider-Man 2 is all they had. Mm -hmm. You don't really see too much negativity towards the platform if you're not like somebody who follows the gaming industry very closely or if you're not somebody who's in the Xbox side of things where obviously... They're looking at that, comparing it to Xbox in 2022 and thinking, hey, both have had their off year. Mm -hmm. But if you're just a general consumer, I still, don't, I still don't think there's very much negativity towards PlayStation after all of the weird things that they, that's been going on with them, with the remakes and remakes. And, and again, this year, just really nothing. And then no roadmap going forward. So I don't know. It's, gonna, it's definitely hard. <laughs> It sounds like you're alluding to what many in the community call the Xbox tax, which I think means something different depending on the type of content creator you are, the type of journalist you are. But is, yeah. is that what you're alluding to? Is this the idea of an Xbox tax? Uh, I mean, somewhat. I mean, I don't... The Xbox tax is a funny thing. I absolutely understand the perception that there is a bias towards the platform that you're seeing getting a bunch of negative news about it, or you don't think it deserves mm -hmm. that. I think in, in general, like it, video games are an art form. It's almost impossible not to have a bias for an art, right? No mm -hmm. matter who you are, you'll have some sort of um, affiliation with one brand or the other, which one has brought you more joy throughout using it and stuff like that. So I think there definitely is a bias and I think more people just play playstation or play nintendo or play that uh the other platforms than they do xbox so they may go into looking at xbox with the negative light i don't know if there's i don't think there's any sort of like crazy against cabal that they go that everyone meets and they they come up with how can we take down xbox because it's a trillion dollar company and, and they're rooting gaming i don't think any of that happens i just think that people have their preferences naturally towards one side or the other so that could be it. I also, I, but I, what I, I would say I was really alluding to there is just people, if you've been on PlayStation throughout PS4, all, no matter how negative or how many bad things PlayStation does, it seems throughout this generation so far, it doesn't really matter. They're still going to go out and, and hype up and buy anything that they do put out. And I can, it's because of sure. the goodwill, I guess, PlayStation's built throughout all of those years of having huge games on their platform. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's just one of those consistently reoccurring topics as an Xbox yeah. content creator that I feel uh, uh, means something different to different people, but also it's almost like I'm forced to comment in some respects yeah. because it is a narrative that continues throughout the community. And so I was just curious there. Um, yeah. I am curious about your Xbox journey though. Uh, 360 generation did you have any standout xbox games that were special to you or that meant something special to you the entire gear series and, and yes and my man yeah like the way i mean i don't know yeah gears for sure we me and my friends would literally play online every single day and then gears 3 i, I don't know I don't, i'm sure everyone's played gears 3 by now but like probably one of the most like sad slash crazy moments in gaming history for me with the whole dom stuff like mm -hmm. i thought that was one of the best ways that a character has ever you know i don't know if i should say it but you know what i'm talking about right like i do yep okay yeah so um so yeah like that was incredible and I just remember the whole lead up to Gears of War, the aura around it, because it was a brand new series. You remember the Mad World commercial and that just like has a, a huge memory for me, just always intrigued and, and excited about the magic of what this game was going to be. And then it dropped and it was it was an incredible game. So the, though, uh, Gears and Halo, I mean, th there's other games as well, but those are the ones that bring me back to the 360 generation. And then jumping online, because that's when I really got online, Call of Duty as well, um, Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops and stuff. Like those were huge moments for me. I spent a lot of time just hanging out with friends because of those games. Mm -hmm. I have a similar thing. I bought an Xbox 360 by selling Plasma in order to play Gears of War in the dorms. That was my 
my thing. And then I have a very close tie uh, to the gear series as well. And um, Halo, I didn't jump into Reach. You said Halo 3 was one for you? Yeah, Halo 3. Yeah, gotcha. Reach was Reach was great too. Actually, Reach, I think, was like um, it had a, it had different opinions. People loved it. People hated it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought the multiplayer was a lot of fun. And actually, the campaign, I, I think it's like a lot of people think it's one of the worst ones, unless I'm mixing no it up way. with some, unless I'm thinking about ODST. I forget. But anyway, Halo Reach was incredible. I actually really enjoyed Halo Reach. Dope. Dope. Same, same. The Xbox One generation for me had a really cool set because it wasn't very popular and it had it truly did crash and burn on release. And and it had that yeah. several years where like not much happened, um, but I think it had some gems in there. I know I have a few. I'm curious if we have similar ones. Are there any gems from the Xbox One generation that stand out to you as special? The Sunset Overdrive, for sure. Nice. It's okay. yeah. Sunset Overdrive, one of my favorite games of that entire last generation that I feel like nobody played, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. And it was one I just fell into because I bought the white Xbox One with the Sunset Overdrive pack in. And I don't know if I would have ever played it if it wasn't for that. But man, I'm happy that that's the version I picked up and I was blown away by that. And then Master Chief Collection after they fixed it was, was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I agree. Master Chief Collection, I think, is very special. Very special. I uh, I found myself really gravitating towards ReCore. Um, ReCore is one that stands out uh, for me from the Xbox One generation. And I have this weird blend because the the latter portion of the Xbox One generation just is the Series SX generation for me. They just blend. Uh, so there's kind of a unique element there, too. Yeah. Um. I, I was just it looked thinking, like you got distracted. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. I was just thinking about Recore as well. And yeah, that's one that it would be. I wonder if they would ever bring bring that game back. Probably not. But that was the kind of like a little hidden gem act, action platformer, third person style game, right? So I'm surprised mm -hmm. that not, there's not that many people. I, that one just flopped right at the start, if I remember correctly. And it just kind of mm -hmm. fell off from there. But it definitely was a hidden gem that, that people should check out. I think so, too. I think so, too. Well, uh, what is it you're playing these days? Of course, you put a lot of time into content creation. How much do you get to play yourself? Um, this year has been very tough. I have played it like I've played uh, a good amount of games, but this year I've moved twice. Uh, as, as you can see in my background here, I've, I've, I just finished setting up in this room. Uh, right now, I've been just playing a ton of Halo Infinite, uh, going through the new update, which is great. been playing Call of Duty. Um, play i've been also playing my switch i've been playing tears of the kingdom which is a phenomenal game so that's kind of my three game rotation right now i'm going to be starting um, assassin's creed mirage very very soon uh, once things do settle down but it's been a very very busy year for me this year even compared to last year in 2022 and xbox didn't have anything first party or anything big but i probably played way more games last year which is arguably one of the worst years in releases mm -hmm. compared to this year where it's arguably one of the greatest years ever in releases are you do you take holiday breaks or time off from content creation <laughs> given that you have like a daily rhythm yeah well luckily um i'm very lucky to have a wife that when we go on vacation when we're in the hotel room and it's like 1 a.m and she's asleep She's like, you can make a video while I'm sleeping in the, in a closed off space. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. closet. I don't know. It's like, or in a different room, depending on the hotel room. Right. So luckily I've been able to do that, but I, I, I'm going to start probably trying to set up some breaks. It's just, it's difficult. Cause you're always thinking about like the YouTube algorithm. You're thinking about will people be upset that I didn't put out a video today and that type of stuff. But I gotta, you have to understand obviously Life and, and things come first at times, so I'll probably try to set up some more breaks when I can. Gotcha. Makes sense. Well, before I let you go, we have uh, a couple community questions for you. First one comes from Dave Orr from over on Twitter, X. Uh, he'd like to know your top five favorite games of all time. Ooh, that is that's a tough one. So Halo, Combat Evolves in there. Mm -hmm. I would say... I'll go with Gears 3 just because of the memories of how the trilogy ended and everything. I'll put that in there as well. Um, I love um, Legend of Zelda 
A Link Between Worlds, which was a 3DS title, uh, one of my mm-hmm. favorite Zelda games of all time. So I would put that in there as well. Well, Donkey Kong Country 2. Okay, we're at four. And five. Toss up. Like, I was going to. I th- it's either Super Mario World because that's so much or Knights of the Old Republic between one of those two. So I'll go Knights of the Old Republic because that's like one of the first real RPGs that got me into enjoying RPGs. Gotcha. How heartbroken were you when it was announced that remake wasn't happening? I was. I was pretty sad, but at the same time, I'm, I'm like, you know what? This is a good thing at the end of the day, because now we don't have to worry about a studio coming in and messing up the game and then Mm -hmm. just ruining the legacy of it. So at the same time, I was kind of happy. And I think there's a, it being on like that to me, it's an Xbox game because when it came out on the OG Xbox, that's, that's every, when everyone thinks about it. And I think this is a per- great opportunity if PlayStation wants nothing to do with this for Xbox to sweep in here and get that thing remade and, and remade properly. Because if they're going to remake it and it's not done well, that will be way worse than it just never coming out. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll take you there. Uh, Dano12, who is a patron of the show, uh, has, he has two questions for you. Three questions if you want to get technical. The first one, arguably the most important, uh, do you dip your pizzas in sauce of any kind? It depends the type of pizza, like the, like the cheap pizza. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to like an expensive, good pizza place, no, I, I probably won't end up dipping it. it it's okay. Ha- Cause you got to taste the dough, right? If it's great dough, you got to taste how good the dough is. You can't just yeah. slather Agreed. in garlic sauce or something. Agreed. And is it garlic sauce that you would be dipping in? Or are we talking marinara, ranch? What's your jam here? I garlic or cheddar jalapeno usually are the two that I go for with the cheap pizzas in my area. Fair enough. I'll take that one. All right. Uh, Dana would like to know which game had you most have you most anticipated that turned out well? Like a game that has turned out well that you were really hoping for and just ecstatic that it was good. Um tough one i just got to go with gears again okay like i was anticipating gears 3 so much to see how this story was going to continue and end and it, i i was very happy with it so mm-hmm. yeah, i'll go with that i know it's the same game but it's the one that comes to mind okay fair enough and what about the opposite a game that you were really looking forward to that your heart was just broken because it disappointed you oh that one's easy death stranding <laughs> i hate that ah, game okay <laughs> Yeah, I was really I, looking I, forward I, to it. New Kojima IP. I was like, and coming from his own studio, I'm like, man, he's going to knock this thing out of the park. And I know a lot of people loved it, but it just wasn't for me. I, I couldn't get past like, I think I played like 10, 11 hours and I just, I couldn't do it anymore. What, what I think was a killer for me was having to hit X like five times just to watch um, the shower scene and then him to pop mm. a monster energy drink. I was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Do you, uh, well, I, I, but as we start to close out here, I'm curious, uh, away from the gaming side, do you have goals for your channel? Like, are you trying to upgrade things, reach a certain level of an audience? Is there, is there a goal that drives you or is it just you enjoy the rhythm, the cadence of making videos every day? I, I enjoy the rhythm, honestly. Um, the, it's, the goal is just trying to improve and grow it at a consistent basis every year or every month or whatever. And the cadence of making videos essentially does that. So yeah, no, I would say just continue what I'm doing and, and um, continue. We try to improve and, and provide better content for people. Gotcha. Makes sense. Do you have any favorite content creators of your own that you look towards uh, or, or enjoy consuming or checking out? Um, I watch a lot of retro gaming. I'll, like I, I, I mean, in, in the, the Xbox community, there's just lots of different podcasts and stuff, but my content that I always go to when I'm just relaxing and I don't want to focus on um, the news or anything, I watch like Metal Jesus Rocks, um, mm-hmm. the Game Chasers. I don't know if you know those guys. Um, like Metal Jesus' entire crew, like this guy named Radical Reggie I watch. Like I watch a lot of uh, retro guy named Happy Console Gamer. 
just love I love the retro stuff. So that's kind of what I watch on my spare time when I'm just relaxing. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Plume, I'm grateful to you for joining me today for talking about your craft, talking a little bit about your gaming history. Uh, let people know where they can find the content that you create. Yeah, I mean, on YouTube uh, at Plume Network, and then you can also follow me on X at uh, Plume Network as well. So those are the two main spots. There you, there you go. Listeners, thank you again for tuning in to Creator Talk. Please consider supporting XEP over on YouTube uh, or Patreon as well. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Take care.